Hi, Peter Charles here, folks, for Life Fly Fishing. And today let's talk about actually tying our own jigs uh, for conventional angling, not just for fly fishing. Uh, I've got a, a video called Headstander Fly where I talk about how to put together a fly that really mimics the shaky head technique. And I was inspired by that to tie this fly and it works like a charm. Trust me, the bass love it. So I thought, you know what, why not uh, do a video which basically shows that same style of fly done uh, on a jig, like this one here. This is a football jig. Uh, it's one of uh, these beasties here. Uh, it's Mustad. Uh, this is an eighth ounce jig. I'm going fairly light because uh, I want this thing to move in current. I don't want it to be pinned to the bottom. But I mean, you know, you've got all these different kinds of jigs you can use. So you can, you know, you can use just your standard old, you know, lead head jig if you want, you know, that one. You, you could do anything you want. Now, you're going to say to yourself, why should I buy them, be, uh, sorry, why should I tie them when you can buy them? Yeah, there we go. This is a, a big uh, one ounce jig that I use for striped bass. This is a smaller one that I could use for uh, smallmouth here in Ontario. The bottom line is both of these work. You can buy them in the store. Why uh, tie your own? Well, we're all familiar with some people do tie bucktail jigs. I mean, that's the most common thing you'll see where fly tying and conventional angling come together is that we tie flies uh, that are like clousers, which are the fly fishing version of a, a bucktail jig, basically. Uh, or you can tie bucktails on a jig, but we're not doing that today. We're going to tie rabbit hair which is a lot more interesting than bucktail when it comes to fishing for smallmouth bass. It has a life of its own. It's amazing stuff. Now I'm going to put up a video of my headstander fly done in a fish tank so you can see what it looks like. And what you can see as I move it, you'll see all the bubbles that are attached to the hair. And that keep that hair buoyant. That hair stands straight up. Doesn't that look like a shaky head, right? Okay. So you can fish this along the bottom in uh, still water in a lake and it'll, it'll look just like that just like what I'm showing you in this video now what is cool is that every time you make a cast you're refreshing those bubbles so uh, it that will retain that uh, bubble uh, buoyancy throughout the whole day of fishing and the other thing is an incredibly rugged fly uh, you tie it right and it will last. You can fish an entire day, provided you don't lose it to a snag. You can fish the entire day with dozens and dozens of fish on this thing and it'll still hang together. So it's a very, very effective pattern and it works. Believe me, it works. Now what's really cool if you fish in a river and you use something like a light uh, football jig or just, a, just any old light jig, what happens is this thing behaves just like a bait fish along the bottom. So you cast it upstream, right? And then you start to retrieve it, it heads downstream, and then you stop the retrieve, it dives to the bottom, and it reorients itself back upstream, just like a bait fish would. And then as soon as you begin to retrieve again, it curves around and starts heading back downstream again. It looks so much like a bottom-dwelling bait fish, you won't believe. A sculpin, a goby, anything like that. It looks exactly like those fish behave when they're in current. Turn the heads upstream when they come to a stop, when they're at rest, and then when they're hunting and feeding, they go downstream and move. The movement of the rabbit strip is just incredible. This thing looks incredible underwater. It looks just like a real thing. I mean, and it, what's interesting is the first time I went out and fished one of these uh, on a spinning rod, I, I was testing it close to me just to see how it would behave, and I was losing sight of it. It looks so good underwater. It looks so real that I was losing sight of the thing. I was like, okay, where is it? Uh, and trust me, if you've got bass that are in a really fussy mood, you know, and you've thrown everything imaginable at them and they're not taking, put something like this on really subtle, really, really subtle, moving slowly. You know, those bass will probably go for it because their senses underwater are way better than ours. Yeah, I couldn't see it underwater, but trust me, I bet you the a bass that was nearby would have no trouble seeing it. So when you're looking at this, it's a stealthy pattern. It's meant uh, to fish for high pressured bass under situations where they're just not hitting anything else. They don't want to, they don't want a loud flashy presentation. They want something subtle. They want something that's non-threatening, uh, something they don't have to work hard to get at. 
And yeah, if you're having one of those slow days, I'd say check one of these things on and have a go for it. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna show you the tools you need. We're gonna go to some basic techniques. Now, there are some basic fly tying stuff videos out there. I'm not gonna go into great depth, but uh, I'm gonna to touch on the basics so you could actually get started with this video with a little bit of help. So the first thing I'm gonna do though is I'm going to come in here. You see these prongs on here. We don't need these prongs for this uh, pattern. So I'm gonna crush those down. This is soft lead, so they'll crush quite nicely. There we go. So we got those out of the way. Okay, the first thing we need to get is a vise. We need something to hold the jig. Uh, and you can see this one is a rotary vise, and you can see I can turn it, and that allows me to uh, wrap on materials very, very easily. But a rotary vise is a bit expensive, so uh, you can spend less and get a, a standard vise which doesn't rotate. And so you would be always tying the fly in this position, or it would look like this if, uh, if it was face on, and it wouldn't move. Uh, and so, the, you know, there are, you know, inexpensive vices, uh, standard vices that don't move, or you can spend more money and get a rotary vise. If you plan on doing a lot of, of uh, jigs, I would suggest you get the rotary, rotary vise. It does make your life a lot easier. Now, I've got my thread, and it's on what's called a bobbin holder, or bob, bobbin, people call different names. The idea is it allows you to uh, run the thread smoothly onto the hook. So you need one of these. You need one to buy one of these, and get one that has ceramic. I'll see if I can put this on camera. You'll see the uh, ceramic insert in there. You need that ceramic insert. So don't go really cheap that doesn't have the ceramic, because otherwise it cuts the thread. To get the thread in there, you're gonna need this threader. Now, if your wife sews, she knows all about threaders, I'll let you teach her how to, uh, sorry, I'll let her teach you how to use it. We're gonna need hackle pliers to hold the wire. Just enables us to hold slippery materials. Very handy device to have. Um, I use simple nail clippers for cutting wire. We're gonna be cutting wire today. We use what's called a bodkin, which is just, you know, a point. And that's good for picking stuff out. And we need a good pair of scissors. And these are fly tying scissors. Don't get cheap scissors. You can cheap out in a lot of places. Don't cheap out in your scissors. These are about 25 bucks. And the thing is they're serrated. So when you, when you close the jaws on some hair or thread, it grips. You just like sewing uh, scissors. They do have the same pattern. So when you're trying to cut uh, a material, it doesn't skid out from underneath the blade. So a good pair of fly tying scissors. Don't go cheap, you'll be sorry, you'll regret it. Get a decent pair, and um, they can last you for years if you take care of them. If you don't drop them on cement, and they'll be good, okay? So that's basically what you need. You need the bobbin, you need a bodkin, which is just, you know, just a point. Some clippers to cut the wire. Threader to thread your bodkin, bobbin, I should say. Hackle pliers to hold the wire. Good pair of scissors. So how do we start? Okay, the thread I'm using is uh, what we call a six all, which is kind of a standard thread. This one I'm using olive, but if you're gonna go out and buy thread, just buy black. You know, 99% of stuff you can do for conventional angling can be done with black. I mean, yeah, if you want to get into other stuff, you buy other colors, but um, y you know, you can start with black. So when you start, you notice how I've got my thread in my fingers and I'm going away from me onto the hook shank and I'm gonna put it just behind where the lead stops. And then I'm gonna cross over the thread. And what that does is locks it in place. Now I'm gonna cut off the tag here. We don't need that anymore. So you can see this is now locked in place. It won't come off. And uh, so that's how you start. It's called casting on in the old fashioned language for fly tying. They call that casting on. It's to be able to get the thread started. Now I'm just gonna work the thread to the back. Right to where the bend starts. Now we're gonna put on our copper wire. Now this is green copper wire. Um, any copper wire is gonna do. We don't have to be fancy with the wire. I'm just using green because I have it. But uh, you just need a medium copper wire. Um, so this would do the job, but you can use smaller stuff. You can use a little fatter stuff. 
but you need a wire to hold on the wing and we'll be showing you how that works in a couple of minutes. So what I do is I just wrap this on here. We don't have to get fancy, just a few firm wraps to keep that wire from moving. We don't want it pulling out. Okay, the next thing we're going to use is this something called ice chenille. And this is what we're going to make the body out of it, and it's shiny. Now, I'm using this olive, shiny, sparkly olive stuff. And that's the label, that's what it looks like. But you can use white, you could use yellow. There's a number of colors. I'll leave that up to you. The color choice I'm going to leave up to you because it's going to be depending on what the bottom dwelling bait fish will look like in your area. I'm doing this one in olive. You could do it in light brown, dark brown, different colors. You could use a white. This re represents the belly. So you could do this in white if you wanted to. But the cactus chenille gives you your flash, which is what you need. In a, in a, you always want a bit of flash in whatever we tie on. So that's where we're going to get it from. I'm going to put a couple of wraps in there to hold it. Get it out of the way. And you can see my fly tying vise has a little holder here. I'll move that into the camera view. It's got a little spring that holds the material out of the way. One of the things about fly tying or tying a jig, you have to plan where you need your thread. And we need the thread at the front. So I'm going to move my thread and I'm going to do a half hitch here. And you can see I put my fingers and then I turn my fingers and it makes a crisscross loop. And if you can learn to do a half hitch, you're able to tie your fly off. Now this is where I'm going to use the rotary vise. Uh, and it allows me, this is the kind of cool thing, I can just turn my hook around and wind on the body. And you notice I'm wiggling it so it flares up, it doesn't get trapped too much. Now I'm going to stop short there. I've got a, a little bit left over. I'll bring my thread back and I'll put one wrap to hold it. So now I'll bring this back and I'll put it in my material holder again, that spring. There we go, that keeps it out of the way. Now the next step is to put on some rubber legs. Rubber legs are very important for smallmouth bass. They love rubber legs. So uh, here I'm using this variegated pattern, which is like chartreuse and black. Again, this is a color choice, depending on what your material, your bait fish looks like in the area. And I'm going to take this and you notice it's relatively long. So I'm going to match it up. So I've made a loop like this. And I'm going to come in with my scissors and cut the loop. So now I have two and I have a pair of legs for either side. So we just start with one. And I'm just going to put that on. Now they do sometimes move. That's fine. Get, you know, and you can, maybe if you're not happy with the length, you can pull them a little bit. You know, this is the type of, you know, take your time, play, play with it, get it the way you want. Now we'll do the other side. Again, try to get them even so they're the same length. Okay, we've got them square. Okay. Now I'm going to come in here with some CA glue. And this is the key to making this pattern rugged. You're, you're, you're liberal with the CA glue. You come in here and you just put a few drops of CA glue along in here. Because what we're going to do is I'm just going to advance the thread. And then I'm going to come in with my chenille. Then I'm going to come in front of the legs. Make another turn. Now I'm going to wrap behind the chenille and trap it. See, it's trapped now. And so the trapping of the thread with the um, glue is going to hold this in place. Now I come in with my scissors. You notice I'm using my finger to push my thread out of the way so I don't cut my thread. And I come in here very as close to possible and I trim off the tag. So now we have got the body and the legs of our jig done. Now we're going to come in with our rabbit strip wing. And here I've got a pack of this olive rabbit strip and it's got the tips are tied, dyed black. And they come in all sorts of colors and varieties. You can get black, purple, red, oh you name it, the color strip. You can get natural colors like these. 
uh, you can get ones that are barred. You've got some dark ones, but you want what they call rabbit strips or another name for it is zonker strips. Okay, this is badger, it's not rabbit. There's other, other types. So strips, zonker strips, you, you don't get, there's one variety you'll see in stores called crosscut. That's for a different purpose. Don't buy the crosscut, buy the strips. Okay, at this point, we're gonna put on our rabbit. And how we do that, we are going to measure the length of the rabbit. It's, it's like putting on a soft plastic uh, swim bait on your hook, on, your, on a worm hook, for example. You have to uh, measure the length. This is no different. And what I'm gonna do now is come in and poke a hole, poke it onto the hook. Now, we'll just take it off the vise temporarily I'll just move it around out of the way. We'll put it back on the vise. Now we can see here, it's basically I'm putting it upside down. This is a jig. So the top is, the point of the hook is up because it's a jig, right? So that's how I'm gonna tie the wing on. So I'm gonna pull that forward and I'm going to lock it in place. Again, I'm going to use my rotary vise. I'll just put a uh, half hitch here. If you're using a standard vise, which doesn't rotate, uh, you just have to work your way around the thread, that's all. Because you won't be able to turn uh, this when we put the wire on. Now, to make my life easy, I'll put uh, hackle pliers on here. So I'll begin the turn. And of course, you have to be careful, this is where we use our bodkin, to poke our way through the hair. So I pull the hair up and pull it back. Now you have to be very careful of the rubber legs. And you can see, being able to turn it with the rotary vise, you can see where you've trapped the hair and move it out of the way. Now I'll bring it around again. Again, I have to move my leg out of the way. Separate the hair. Make sure nothing's caught. Move the leg out of the way. You can see having hackle pliers on here makes it very easy to handle a wire. You could let go of the wire and it will just hang uh, conveniently out of the way. And if you're getting any hair trapped underneath, just use your bodkin to sort of comb it out. I always like to check this before I finish. So if I have to back up and redo something, I can. Now we're going to put a turn right behind that leg. And bring it up between the two legs. So we don't trap one. And we bring this turn in front of the legs. And I'll put an extra turn in there. Now we'll just go through, as I say, we'll go pick out any hairs that have become trapped. Basically, we're just combing it with the bodkin. This is a bit tedious, but you end up with a better result if you don't have a lot of hairs trapped. So that looks good. Now I'll move that out of the way and I will put in some turns to lock the wire in place. This is where you come in with your nail clippers. Keep your thread out of the way and cut your wire off. Okay, now we're just going to finish off Put some turns in here to make sure that rabbit stays locked. And what we're going to do now is put a little bit of CA glue in here. And one trick is to put a bit of CA glue on your thread. Keep everything out of the way. We don't get CA glue on other stuff.
Now, at this point, you can let the glue cure and then cut your thread off and it's secure. Or you can do what I'm going to do is put in a half hitch with my fingers. And a little dab of glue. And I can come in here, I'll pull it nice and tight. Come in here with my scissors and cut the thread off. And there we go. Our uh, rabbit strip wing jig is finished. Um, you can use, this is a 1 8 inch jig. Whoops, I'm dropping my stuff. This is a 1 8 inch jig. You can uh, obviously make it on heavier jigs if you want. You can see the length of my rabbit. It's a whole thing is about a little over four inches long. So when this jig is sitting on the bottom, that rabbit will kick right up because it's going to be full of air, as I explained earlier, as you've seen in the video with the headstander fly, and it will actually pull the back end of the hook up. So the whole thing, body, hook, and everything will be standing up in still water. And in moving water, it will orient into the current. So if, you're, if you pull it downstream and stop, it'll drop to the bottom and orient back upstream, just like a, a real bait fish. Incredible movement on this. If uh, this one has got black tips, you could blacken some more. You could come in here with some magic marker and uh, Sharpie and just add a little black to the front if you wanted to, to darken it up. There's different things you could do to dress these up. And as I say, you can use any number of different uh, types of rabbit. Just remember you're using what's called zonker strips. You know, sometimes you'll see them classed as rabbit strips. This one says black zonker strips. You don't want to use crosscut. So if you see crosscut, just leave it there. That's for a different purpose. But zonker strips, rabbit strips, those are the types you want to use. Broad variety of colors. Like I said earlier, I'm using olive thread, but you could use black for all of these. Any wire that you can use, it's relatively fine. You can use, even if you pulled it off of an electric motor. Uh, you need some CA glue and a jig and bingo. And this thing works. Oh, whether it's my headstander fly or this particular jig pattern, you know, they're so realistic in the water and they look so much like a natural bait fish in the way they behave that, uh, you know, they'll dynamite. And I think they're especially important for our conventional anglers in that when you're dealing with those, you know, days when the bass are fussy, they're not moving very far, they're turned off by aggressive uh, presentations, you know, something subtle like this can save the day and put you into a lot of fish. Because I know personally, I've been out fishing with flies and there, I've been surrounded by conventional anglers and guess who was the only one catching fish, okay? So sometimes the fly is the ticket because it moves slowly, it's subtle, it doesn't make any noise, you know, it, and, it, and it looks like it's trying to hide, <laughs> which is what a real bait fish does. So when the bass are in that kind of fussy mood, try this one. Cheers.